Hey, what's going on, guys? So today we're talking about a special edition of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Penny Stock Market Watch. Um, this is, I have to give credit where credit's due. Um, at Armed Darkly commented on uh, that the cards, none of the cards on the list are under a dollar. So they're not technically penny stocks, which in actuality, if you look up the definition of penny stocks, we'll just do this right here so everybody can see it. Um, it is a common stock valued at less than one dollar. However, there's also like invested. That's according to um, just Google, I guess. I don't know where Google's getting the source. It might Google's source might be Wikipedia because Investopedia says a penny stock typically refers to a stock of a small company that trades for less than five dollars a share. So it goes back and forth, really up to personal preference. But I was just super curious as to what the best selling cards under a dollar were. Right, just to see if there is value here, because you look at the first six cards, they're all really solid. Right, you look at Called by the Great from the Albi Strike Structure deck, you also have uh, Labellium, the Syrian Dragon. I think without a doubt, this is a valuable pickup, right, because Albi Strike Structure deck is its only printing. Now, because so many players are picking this Structure deck up, it is going to take a while. For it to get to it but if we was all right and i was talking to somebody who needed i was at my locals on sunday they were talking about potentially picking it up and if you need any further uh convincing this structure deck is what you're looking at here right so we look at salomon great bailing i believe its highest rarity was from oh it's actually only from the structure deck okay even better so that's a great example so that's that's a good comp right a good comp for that card. I mean, we're looking at two, three dollars. Very solid card. Um, that's a good comp for Labunium, the Searing Dragon, right? Because I think that it's a very good card. It's a necessary card for the R type, and its only printing is in a structure deck, right? I've been on Solemn Strike for a minute. If you're not, this card actually has showed up on multiple occasions for the Market Watch. Um, this barely fits the description. Of no longer being a dollar, right? And um, the grand creators are still on the shelves. Once they come off the shelves and the new sets come on the shelves, this will be a dollar card, if not more. Um, I could definitely see it being more sometime soon now. Um, Ghost Sister. Um, actually, Ghost, a different... Actually, I believe this card was on the Penny Stock Market Watch. Or no, it was a different version. We did talk about this card. Um, I do want to say that. And there's the Maximum Gold version here as well. Um, it's a fantastic card, but I would just hold off on cards like this. This is what I mentioned. I, I would just hold off on cards that are against Special Summoning until we see the next ban list, because Maxi might come back. If Maxi doesn't come back, negatives. And I really, like, the biggest thing with this card, and I talked about it a little bit on the Penny Stock Market Watch, is that it's more of a... The only reason why... Like, your opponent doesn't care. He's trying, okay, so here's what it says. It says, each time your opponent Special Summons... An effect monster during the main or battle phase, you gain life points equal to the attack. If you did not gain life points, your life points are halved. So that's kind of relevant, having your life points, but gaining life points is really not that super relevant. Like, I have 14,000 life points, but my opponent's got seven negates. Right? Um, this card's interesting. I think, because there's obviously going to be budget branded Despia. Um, and this could be the, the, the target uh, that you're looking for here. Uh, it definitely does get ran. It definitely isn't a bad buy, but it's not even really a dollar or less. Uh, Ghost Reaper, as far as playing Ghost Reaper, I've never been the biggest fan. As far as whether or not um, it could potentially go up in value, I've never really seen Ghost Reaper have an insane amount of value. Like It's always had the value that you're probably about to see on the screen. When I click on all versions here, which is like, okay, so the secret rare from Shining Victories is $35, but most of them are a dollar or less. You're not really going to see maximum gains from Ghost Reaper. And the biggest reason for that is just simply because you need to buy the Ghost Reaper targets. And the thing is, is if you, not only do you need to buy the Ghost Reaper targets, but you also need to run them. And some decks just can't play them. You look at a deck like Branded Despia, there's no room for Ghost Reaper. And the only reason you'd run Ghost Reaper is just for the mirror match. Now, I will say the Dual Devastator version, which is the version here, that's actually the only version that has this printing, right? And there's a lot of Dual Devastator versions that are like that. 
Every chance that I get, I like to bring that up. Brandon in High Spirits. This is a solid card. Uh, I do think it's a three of. Despian Tragedy has been getting cut down to one of. I wouldn't say this is a good pickup. This one might be. Probably not. We see sometimes that super rares in um, big uh, sets. Some super rares, you never see them. They're like 2 or $3 super rares, sometimes more. Um, and then you see some super rares that are just everywhere, and they're bent up in your little uh, comments tin that you have at home. That's what it's looking like Brandon High Spirits is going to be. Emergency Teleport, I would hold off on just right now. I hope it gets semi-limited or limited but if you don't if you personally like i said i would me personally but if you think that this card's not going to get hit on the ban list 100 pick up your play set tomorrow i mean you have 45 cents at 49 uh 49 50 cents at 61 so you have a lot but once again what's said is it's the grand creators once it starts coming off the shelves there's a definite possibility that this card, which is 50 cents right now, will be what this card is, which is the infinite gold version, which is like two bucks, right? So, okay, let me see if I go, if I go here, right, and I got, I buy all 61 of these at 49 cents a pop, right? We're talking about 30 bucks, 30 bucks uh, before tax and fees, by tax and fees, talking about 35 bucks right for all copies of this and if it's a two dollar card now you have 61 cards that are worth two dollars even if it's a dollar right even if it's a dollar card that's turning 35 into 60 right so i would hold off on it because konami has brought it back to three and put it back down to one before and if it goes back down to one that it's not going to hit a dollar right but if it if you don't think it's going to get hit and you're willing to risk it by all means don't let me stop you what are you doing here? These are the type of cards I was hoping to see while doing this. Like, this was the type of card. When a post monster decides to attack, all attack monsters, your, your opponent control loses 800 attack for each monster they control. This might just be for specifically speed duels, because I know this card used to be really good in duel links, uh, but even in duel links, this card is kind of power crap. And it's just because of this. When opponent's monster declares an attack. Any cards that say that, probably not that good. Like, n none of them are being ran. Like, Drowning Mirror Force is solid. Storming Mirror Force is dope. Quaking Mirror Force is awesome. Um, but there's just not a lot. And, like, Wall of Disruption is cool. I don't know. I don't know what's going on here with this guy um, or gal, but we see four five versions because this is basically a dollar we see five versions at less than a dollar and then boom two dollars already so uh the ship might have sailed on this being under a dollar but so funny um ultimate fusion another dd card can't escape those can't you cannot escape those you could do it five dollars or less ten dollars or less one dollar or less um this doesn't even really fit that description i guess 93 cents right um, you're always going to see DDD cards. You're always going to see Blue Eyes cards. I went a little too far down here. That's okay. Um, uh, Pot of Duality from King's Court. Uh, Pot of Duality is a card that, one, never gets hit on the ban list. Never gets hit on the ban list. And look at the card that it's next to, Flo Andres. What is Flo Andres? It's a tier two deck that runs Pot of Duality at three. And you're not going to look at all formats and go, there's always a deck that's running three copies of Pot of Duality. But... At least like once a year, there is a deck that tops with three copies of Pot of Duality. And if we look at Pot of Duality as a card in terms of value is concerned, there are a lot of copies of Pot of Duality. Why oh, I was not ready for that. I was not ready for this many copies of Pot of Duality, but it makes sense though. All right, because like I said, it is a very solid card. And if we look at just the rare versions... None of them are really going up too super high. So, I don't know. I, it's... I don't like... Okay, this is, this is again, another personal property thing. I don't like the rare version of cards. I think they look ugly, right? But, um, this King's Court version of Pot of Duality could have some potential in the uh, near future. It just all depends. But there are a lot of copies of Pot of Duality. I don't really recommend it. Best case scenario is you're looking at um, 
you buy this card at about 45 cents and it goes to what it's a market price is, which is still some gains, right? If it goes from 40 to 60 cents, we're still we're still in the win column, right? And that's really what you're trying to do here. Um, that's an interesting card. Hakero, another Flo Andres card. Flo Andres is such a great budget deck right now. Uh, once Ryza gets its reprint, that archetype is, is going to be one of the best budget-friendly decks. You'll probably see a Flo Andres deck profile once Ryza. Actually, let me check. I checked this on Sunday as well. I literally checked this every single market watch. Oh, it's goes from the past. I knew it was coming out in a new up-and-coming set. I just wasn't sure what set. Yeah, once this gets dropped, this might even be worth it. The pre-sale price. I know we're talking about a dollar or less, but this is $5 or less, so this is kind of still a penny stock, right? And it is spicy. It could very easily go up after pre-sale if you want to play the pre-sale game with this thing. Um, and I'm sure House of Champs, M.C. 40s probably talked about that card as well. Um, the only reason I was talking about that is because Flo Andres. Flo Andres is about to become super budget, though, and I'm super duper excited about that. That deck... That deck is not as good as how what it val what its value is right now, but it's close, right? And it is a tier two strategy. Obviously, if you brick, obviously there's a lot of choke points for the deck. Um, and I just traded away my D shifters too, but um, still a really solid deck. Um, Albion and the Branded Dragon also only printing is from the structure deck. Definitely could reach fifty cents to a dollar. Uh, Genesis Impact Nightmare Unicorn. I told you. I told you guys. I told you guys to get this card. I said this. Right? And I bought... Take a split second. I bought 24... This is a really big check mark because it's zoomed all the way in. I bought 24 copies of this card at 40 cents. Uh, when was this? Uh, I don't even remember how far back this was. I had to go past... It's, past, it's been past 90 days. And right now, uh, as we make sure we're zoomed all the way out, the card is still there, right? But actually, no, it isn't, because I bought it at, what is it, 40, I said 40 cents, right? I think I said 40 cents. <laughs> so I'm playing a long game. I'm playing a long game, but I just, I wanted to let you guys know, I would never tell you to do something that I wouldn't do myself, right? And if I did, I will preface it by saying, I wouldn't do this, but you can, right? And at some point, this card might be worth a dollar but even if it's worth 60 cents like i said 40 to 60 cents those are the gains we like to see because you got you buy i bought 24 copies 40 cents that was like 10 bucks and if i can turn 10 bucks into 15 bucks hey that's a five that's a biggie bag from wendy's so uh what copy of trap trick trap trick is another one of those cards always absolutely fantastic card um ran in a lot of um decks that like to run a lot of trap cards uh, Godarla doing Godarla things. No punk. Heck yeah. Th this is... I'm curious about this archetype because I see a lot of people playing this archetype. Let me know in those comments down below if you play this archetype and if you like it. Because I see it. I've read some of the cards. It seems like an interesting deck, but it also doesn't seem like it's very good. Right? So you guys let me know in those comments down below um, how you feel about that deck. Uh, Rivalry of the Warlords from the King's Court. Um, and then the Albion Shrouded Dragon. I'm not... I just traded for this card. I'm not the biggest fan of upgrading the rarity on this card i don't really see the need for it but it does look cool um it's just because it's like there's just a one of it, it's not that relevant um magic Caribbean. the um i will say the sleeves of this card look really cool um i don't know if the card itself isn't that great but the sleeves look really good and rivalry of the warlords is absolutely fantastic um especially if we're talking about looking at what are the best decks right now um and Branded is a fantastic deck. And all Branded versions are a fantastic deck. The Branded desk you guys are talking about. And that deck runs a whole lot of different monsters, right? If you're looking at a deck like Sword Soul, for example, Sword Soul could run Rivalry of the Warlords. And how does Branded Despia beat a deck as powerful as Sword Soul through Rivalry of the Warlords? And this is the King's Court version. I'm glad this card came up because even though there are six copies and they're all under a dollar except for the Hidden Summoners version, it is a fantastic card. 
I just think right now some of the best decks can't run this card, but there are decks that still can. Like, I, I think... Correct me if I'm wrong. I think all the Floanderies... I guess they were just all right there. I think they're all Winged Beasts, right? So Floanderies, amazing deck to run that card, right? But let me know what you guys think. This is a special edition of the Penny Stack Market Watch. Literally, pennies, uh, quarters, dimes, and nickels to be spent on these cards. So it's, it's, it's a little bit harder to find a lot of value in here, but there is still value to be found. Remember that, right? But make sure you guys click that like button and that subscribe button to show your support for the channel. But most importantly of all, have a good day.